I will be speaking about architecture and art side by side <coughs> as I see also our craft of architecture as an art form in its mental dimension of existential articulation and expression of life. Buildings do not merely provide physical, center, uh, physical shelter or facilitate distinct activities in addition to housing our fragile bodies and actions, they need to house our minds, memories, desires, and dreams. Buildings mediate between the world and our consciousness <coughs> through internalizing the world and externalizing the mind, structuring and articulating lived existential space <coughs> and situations of life, architecture constitutes our externalized system of order, hierarchy, and memory. Architecture slows down, halts, reverses, or speeds up time, and we can appropriately speak of slow and fast. As Karsten Harris the philosopher suggests architecture is a defense against the terror of time. In my way of thinking, a sincere architect cannot authentically design a house taking the client as an externalized other. The architect has to internalize the client to turn himself into the client and eventually design the building for him herself. Finally, the architect offers the house to the real dweller as a gift. Profound architecture is always a gift. In the case of the settings of Taliesin West, the opposites of caving in and flight, separation and togetherness, enclosure and vista, gravity and weightlessness, darkness and softened light, give rise to a superbly orchestrated ensemble of experience which seems to have the invigorating richness and unpredictability of natural phenomena, held together by an undefinable artistic cohesion and atmosphere. This place feels simultaneously as a primordial spiritual setting and a futuristic and utopian community. Be Like Me is the call of great poetry according to Joseph Kronsky. A profound building makes the very same suggestion. Be like me. Be a little bit more sensitive, perceptive, and responsible. See the world through my eyes and enjoy it. Sarah Robinson recently pointed out to me a perceptive similar remark of Frank Lloyd Wright on the power of ambience. This is what he writes. Whether people are fully conscious of this or not, they actually derive countenance and sustenance from the atmosphere of things they live in and with. I have become so impressed by the power of our atmospheric judgment that I suggest that it could be named our sixth sense. Great works possess timeless freshness and they project the enigmas always anew, as if we were each time experiencing the work for the first time. Simply great architecture as this very place emanates unspoken but contagious existential wisdom. We do not judge environments merely by our senses. We also test and evaluate them through our imagination. Konstantin Prankusi, the master sculptor, advises us, the work must give immediately at once the shock of life, the sensation of breathing. <coughs> 